Here we are going to look at the general principle that is used for drawing common tangents to two given circles. We are going to start with something very simple that we already know how to do and that is uh, given a circle like this and a point in its plane like this here we know how to draw a tangent to that circle from the point. Now I am going to take this tangent that we have already drawn and I am going to move it without changing its orientation. So I am going to move it parallel to itself. And then again I am going to move it in a direction perpendicular to the line so that its end points as you can see are tracing a path which is perpendicular to the line. Now perpendicular to a tangent is a radius to the circle and therefore I am moving in and out of the circle in a radial manner. Let me mark those directions here like this. So these are the paths of the tangent's end points. Now we are going to try and impose a condition that this circle should still remain tangent to this line. Of course that's not possible the moment this line moves like this and the circle will have to expand and keep up with the tangent. So let's uh, make the circle do that. So I'm going to move the tangent and this time the circle is going to accompany the tangent. If required the circle will expand, if required it can even contract. But the relationship of tangency will still be maintained. Now let us do something similar at the other end. At the other end we have a point. But I am going to consider that as a circle of zero radius. I know it sounds absurd mathematically, but it makes things easier to understand. So let's have a circle here of zero radius instead of just a mere point and then again move this tangent like before. And this time even the circle at the other end also expands and keeps up with the tangent. So now we have two circles and both are tangential to this line. So this line becomes a common tangent to the two circles. And this in fact gives us a way of drawing common tangents. A construction of common tangents to two given circles. So suppose we are given these two circles to start with and say this is the common tangent that we want to draw to them. Then if we mark the radii of these circles involved. Say the radius of the red circle is R1. The radius of this circle that we started with first uh, is say RB. I'm calling it RB because I'm going to take it as the base. And finally uh, the radius of this green circle can be worked out. As you can see uh, we are moving this tangent parallel to itself through a distance R1. So even this distance is R1. So naturally the radius of the green circle is the sum of these two distances Rb and R1. So the green circle is R2 is equal to Rb plus R1. And that gives us a way of drawing these tangents, common tangent. We start with drawing a simple tangent to this circle which we are now going to call as the base circle. And what is its radius? Its radius is the uh, difference of R2 and R1, the two circles to which we want to draw the common tangent. And then we just move this tangent okay, through the distance R1, the radius of the smaller circle, and we have the common tangent. The same thing can be worked out for the other side. So instead of moving the tangent radially outward, suppose I move it radially inward. In that case, I'm going to have again two circles uh, to which this line is tangent. So it is still a common tangent, but it is qualitatively different. It is tangent to one side of the circle and the other side of the other circle. Okay, It is passing through the space between the two circles. Such tangent is called an internal common tangent. And how do we get it? Well, let's mark the radii and that will give us a way of doing this. So we have moved this tangent through a distance R1 radially inward from the base circle. So this time the green circle is smaller by the amount R1 and therefore its radius will be R2 is equal to Rb minus R1. And that gives us uh, how to draw this. We start by 
first drawing the uh, base circle which is going to be of the radius r1 plus r2 and then just move the tangent uh, inward okay, so that we get the internal tangent. 